What is a necklift and why is it important in films? Simply put, it's a movie trope frequently used to demonstrate super strength, often applied to make one character appear helpless or outmatched compared to another. It's used a lot in comic book and fantasy movies, so why is this important? Well, unfortunately, it has been misused to compensate for bad writing or to fill in for action scenes in PG-13s, which leads me to a term I've coined called the protagonist throw. What is that, you ask? It's a neck lift combined with a throw. Originally used for intimidation, the earliest movie I've seen the use of the protagonist throw and used effectively is in the original 1985 movie Fright Night, when Jerry the Vampire confronts the protagonist Charlie in order to threaten Charlie into stopping his investigation on our villain. The antagonist demonstrates his super strength by lifting Charlie by the neck, followed by throwing him across the room. Jerry is only threatening Charlie and doesn't necessarily want to kill him, but he could kill Charlie if he really wanted to. An example of this would be shown later in the film when Jerry gets angry and kills a nightclub bouncer by crushing his throat and throwing him across the dance floor. Now a misuse of this trope would be in the 2011 remake of Fright Night, where Jerry clearly wants to kill Charlie, but for some weird reason grabs his neck and throws him, then intimidates him for no reason, while only 15 seconds earlier Jerry had just grabbed and killed a man with no hesitation. Now I know there'll be a lot of people raising their hands and saying, well duh, if Jerry had killed Charlie, then the movie would be over. And they would be absolutely right. Which brings me to the whole point of the video. The protagonist throw has been used more and more to effectively ruin potentially great movies. Case in point, the Terminator franchise. In the original 1984 James Cameron version, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character the T-800 kills a man by punching him very hard. Now I will ask you this question. How many times does the Terminator physically touch the main protagonist Sarah Connor? The answer is once, at the very end of the movie, where it tries to choke her but isn't quite close enough to get a grip on her throat. Now let's compare that to the more recent 2009 Terminator Salvation. As you can see, both movies have the same levels of success and scores on IMDb. Oh wait, no they don't. Okay, well what about Terminator 2? The T-1000 must at least poke John Connor, right? It almost kills him, but no, it never touches him. And for a good reason. The T-1000 literally kills anyone within its range. With that in mind, can you imagine it grabbing John and throwing him? No, because that would be stupid, and the suspension of disbelief within the movie would be broken, and the threat of the Terminator within your subconscious would be gone. A movie does not need to be realistic, only believable and internally consistent. When a director pushes an audience beyond what they're willing to accept, the scene fails in the eyes of that audience. As far as science fiction or fantasy is concerned, I know I'm willing to go along with the expiations and explanations of how the movie works, when the laws of the movie are broken, it comes off either contrived or funny. And yes, John Connor should be dead in the scene, and Catherine Brewster should be dead too. In The Mummy, the main protagonist gets thrown around, while everyone else around him gets killed horribly. In Game of Thrones, Jon Snow gets thrown twice and hit with the blunt end of a weapon, while the guy before him gets stabbed and dies instantly. In Immortals, the Minotaur vs Theseus, Instead of just hitting Thesis over the head with his club, the Minotaur likes to throw our hero around several times. Clearly a more effective technique for killing him. I could go on with more examples, but I think the most extreme use of neck throws and knockbacks would be director Brian Singer's X-Men. Apart from a Wolverine fight or two, as soon as two people or more see each other, everyone ends up flying around on invisible wires. There are ways to get around this trope. For example, in Prometheus, the engineer rips the android David's head off and goes around killing people with ease. 
This adds a high level of threat to his character, as the audience has now witnessed the fact that if he gets his hands on you, you're dead. So when the protagonist gets informed he's coming for her, you know she's in big trouble. The engineer almost kills her, but director Ridley Scott does a good job of setting up the scenes that she has an escape. Now if the engineer had grabbed her and then threw her again and again, it would have destroyed any suspense or realism and left you wondering how she survived his attacks. Now I'm not asking for movies to be like something out of a Ninja Turtles cartoon where no one hits each other, or that action movies only work because they are rated, but I often find as soon as a movie breaks the rules it's created, it becomes less enjoyable. Well, for me at least. I know everyone has different limits to their suspension of disbelief. Some may be higher than others, and I know that the protagonist throw isn't the only thing wrong with movies today, but its misuse is not helping things get better. On that note, I'm going to bring this video to an end, but I'm going to leave you with this question. What makes a good adventure movie for you? Do you care if the hero gets thrown around like a ragdoll? Does that irritate you, or have you never noticed it until now?